And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and dive on into the review. We are going to definitely start out with Lovecraft Country. Oh, my God. And for those of you <laughs> that haven't seen episode nine, Woo! let me give you guys a little clip of the essence of what that show was about. Thomas won't mean much. It's just the first in a long list of sacrifices I made to be your father. Ladies and gentlemen, what can I say about Jordan Peele, J.J. Abrams? They have, in essence, embodied something that a lot of people haven't been able to do. So number one, issues that deal with our community. Most of the time, directors, producers don't want to put them in there because they're afraid of offending people in other communities and draw down their revenues. Jordan Peele said, F that. Yeah. This particular episode dealt with the Tulsa, Oklahoma burnings and killings. And the backdrop to this story, which is just so good. I, I mean, it's really hard to put this in words. In the very last episode, Diana got caught by these punk ass cops who put a spell on her. So cursed her. She, man, they cursed the hell out of this girl. Her ass was being chased by these ugly things right here and was almost about to cause her to turn into one. And so now we fast forward to this episode in which they thought Hippolyta, her mother, was gone. Hippolyta. Hippolyta, excuse me, was gone. She comes back and we find out that they got a damn Marvel multiverse going on. I, I was like, I was like, damn. When they you guys, you said there was 60 trillion different uh different dimensions. Yes, man. And she was she returned from Earth 504, ladies and gentlemen, to save her daughter Diana. Meanwhile, that Christina Braithwaite, we know she wants the blood of teeth. We know she is kind of playing Ruby and Liddy against each other to some degree. And in this particular episode, it got real deep because they had to call on Montrose. They had to call on Atticus. They had to call on Liddy to go back to Tulsa during those riots. And mm -hmm. during the riots, they had to get the book of names so that they could free Diana of that curse, of the curse. Now, meanwhile, when they do get there, they have to split up because Montrose is going to take his ass somewhere to save his gay lover. His gay lover was this guy right here, Thomas. And the clip I showed you was them talking about that scene. We also learned Montrose pretty much confessed that there's a great chance that Atticus might not be his son. And right. that's what that exchange was about. And so they go through the exchange. Um, they we, we see Atticus is the one who saves that group of people, um, Montrose, Freeman, George, and um, who was the girl that was with them, Larry? That was that was um, Atticus's mom. Atticus saves them mm -hmm. from being beat up and killed, potentially. Right. And all the while, Letty is in there pleading with the family to get the book, and she does get the book because she's enchanted by the spell that was put on her by Christina, which gives her the power to be invulnerable. Right. All that said, they managed to get the book. Atticus manages to get Montrose. They get back into the portal, get back in time. And I guess they're going to finish. They, they managed to save Diana and get rid of the curse. But the overall narrative of this story was so good. Letty's pregnant yeah. with a boy. I mean, this thing is good. Larry, expand on the holes I missed. I mean, man. Whew. Man, I love that part where Hippolyta basically turned into a doggone X Men. She yeah. was floating in the air, and her hair turned blue. Yeah, I man. was like, "Woo, mm, mm, man!" Mm, mm, she mm, went. Mm, mm, That's crazy. Though. She said she came back from Earth five hundred four, and I'm thinking to myself, "I'm like, man." I mean, it's funny because when she was up there working on that machine the first time. I was like, I was teasing my wife. I was like, how does she know how to do this? I was like, 
my wife was like, oh, you didn't know that every black woman already knows calculus instinctually? We just do. Because <laughs> I was like, how should you know all these calculations? I agree. You know? I agree. <laughs> Damn but, right. But it was it was it was good. I mean, it was a lot of fun to watch. There were there were people I know that um there were some people online that were frustrated with Letty when she was uh when she was leaving out of Tulsa and they were saying, why is, you know, she's invulnerable. So why isn't she out there just basically kicking butt and, and, and taking names and stopping people from getting hurt? Because but they told part you. Part of that was, is they that told she, you she can't right? change anything. No, yeah, one that was, was part of the thing that she was trying not to change anything. Right. And, and, you know, and so if she did, if she went out there and did like, like that just went and kicked butt, she would have started changing stuff, which wouldn't have worked out well. So, mm hmm you know, I think uh, it was a lot of fun. I guess the book is the book is invulnerable, you know, because it didn't seem to get burned up in the fire at all. So, I mean, that's a good thing because I was a little worried. I was like, there's this fire chick. You need to get up out of there with these with these pages. Right. So it's like the book is enchanted. <laughs> yeah, man. So it was it was a really fun episode to watch. It was hard to watch at certain times when you see some of the stuff that happens. I mean, it's just. Especially what goes on today, it's frustrating. You have to sort of you you, you want to you want to try. You just yeah, it's hard to watch. I don't even know. I don't even want to say what I'm thinking because it's just you just have to you have to just sort of try and you have to try and remember that this part is entertainment, even though it's based on truth. And try not to think about the stuff that's happening in the world today because it just makes you angry and uh, it makes you I, feel a certain way about certain groups. But I honestly I, think I thought, that J Jordan Peele has done a good job. He, I remember you ragging on Spike Lee when he tries to get conscious on us. I feel like Jordan Peele is doing an excellent job of weaving in black mm -hmm. conscious issues along with keeping the fiction going well, too. How do you feel about that? No, yeah, I really like I, I like what he's doing. I, I really do. I like the way that he's I like the way that he is. He's bringing in history mm -hmm. and he's making people wildly uncomfortable while <laughs> while being entertained and mm -hmm. i don't know how white people feel when they watch this but i can only imagine that if you are a white person who is trying to be conscious or woke which i can't imagine that you are a white person and watching this if you're not mm -hmm. i have to imagine the stuff that you're seeing in this show is making you incredibly uncomfortable because the way white people are and this is not like this is some, like, even though it's fantasy, it's it's like fantasy science fiction. The racial elements of this show are definitely not. I mm -hmm. mean, the violence, the the all the racism, the way that people are treated, it's all very, in, in, in large part, it's probably tamped down a bit because in some mm -hmm. of these places, it was horrific. It was brutal. I mean, to the point where I don't even understand how or why black people continue to live in those places. I just would have left. But, you know, I mean, I understand people have their homes and that is what they do, but... And sometimes you become a prisoner to what you only know. That's true, but at the same time, you did have a lot of people that were moving up north. They were moving to Chicago. They were moving to, to, to Boston and New York and, and Detroit. different places. Detroit. And Detroit, there, there, were play, there were places where people were moving and their families would come back and say, hey, there's good stuff up here. You should come up here. I, I, I personally would have dipped, but that's neither here nor there. It was fantastic. I really love the fact that Hippolyta came back when she did. You know, she basically jacked herself into that machine and, and, mm -hmm. and held that portal open. I can, there was a scene uh, that they were previewing for next week where they show Hippolyta on that bridge back at the, uh, what's that place called? The Apria, Apria, what is it called again? Where they, where the house was, where they tried to do the ceremony. Um, Remember not that? Arkham. I, I, I forgot the name yeah. of it. It was yeah, Arkham. Was it Arkham? Artem, yeah, yeah. Artem, yeah, Artem. So they show a scene where they're back on that bridge. It looks like an Artem, and it looks like there's people coming at them from both ends. And you see Hippolyta right in the middle with that blue hair. And I'm thinking she's going to be an extraordinarily powerful creature at this point. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. because she, I mean, we already saw how powerful she was holding that portal open. And then it just seemed like something, some sort of transformation happened. We obviously, we saw her face turn blue. I mean, her, her hair turned blue. We saw her skin and everything changed. I think she might have changed into one of those sort of supernatural beings that 
you know, that sort of had her and put those things in her wrist. So I don't know. It's um, it's going to be fun to watch. I, I can't imagine. I just can't imagine how good the next episode is going to be. It's just because every time every episode seems to keep getting better and better and better. And the story is so good. It's just. I'll tell you, every time I watch a, a TV show now, I, it's sort of like this is the new standard. I mean, I used to think The Wire was the best show on TV, and I think this show is the best show that's ever been on TV. And and it's it's at this point, everything else is sort of judged against it. And I I mean, I don't even know how it's someone's it, gonna beat this. It's it, man. It is. It's, it's definitely. This is what I don't understand, Larry. When we do our reviews on Power. By now, we've got over 150 people watching. We're talking about Lovecraft Country, which is a far more superior show. We've yeah. got 50 people in here. What's up with that? Do you think people are having a hard time um, under a hard time trying to put together the story? Or you, you might have to, it's not something you can just easily dive into. I guess the nicest thing I'm trying to say is you got to think too much when you watch this show. I don't know. I think I think part of it is is that people, people in this country, black people in particular, and I, I hope I'm not dogging anybody out too bad. I'm one of y'all, so you know Me I too. fall into the same I fall into the, to the same traps. But I think people oftentimes like the stereotypes. They like the stereotypical stuff. It's easy. It the the typical sex and and drugs and crime, and it, it's easy. And people like that stuff when it for black people. And so, when you have, when you have a, a show like this, some people don't like watching it because it is uncomfortable at times. When you see white people calling us n words and and lynching folks and shooting us, and and doing all this horrible stuff that 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 uh, that we've tried to to put behind us, that we've tried to move forward and progress past. When you're revisiting that, it makes people uncomfortable, and it makes people mad. It makes people angry. It makes people uncomfortable. And some people don't like it. So they just don't watch it. And, and other times I think it's too, people just like simple gangster stuff. They just like, they like, people like to have, they like the stereotype because the stereotype is, is, is easy and familiar. Hmm. Well, so we got to talk about, man, I, I, I know this is about episode nine and episode nine stood out on its own. It was a great episode. But there was a couple of things that happened in episode eight that tie into episode nine we've got to talk about. Like, right. you from the very beginning felt like the monsters were on the side of Atticus. Talk about how at the very end of episode eight, when they were shooting up Liddy's crib, and right. the monster pops up, saves Atticus from the bullet. And then the, the monster's about to get Atticus, we thought, and Atticus puts his hands up and the monster stops. Was that a spell? Is that enchantment? Talk about that particular scene, Larry, because I thought it was excellent. Well, yeah, that was a, I mean, that was when Atticus was using the, the pages and he cast a spell. He had, he had cast a protection spell, but he didn't quite understand what that was going to be. Like, like when they were in the woods in the first episode, and those monsters came out. That was because uh, uh, what's his name, the older Braith White, he had cast that same spell ex so that he could have those monsters protect him and protect the uh, you know the house and all that, so people wouldn't basically find it and get to it. Mm -hmm. And so when Atticus cast that same protection spell, he didn't understand at the time he was casting it what form that protection was going to come in. So when it came out, because you know they were they were in the process of shooting him. The bullets were out of the gun, and that thing just came out of there, out of the straight up from out of the ground, and it took the bullets for him, and then went to eating all the all the uh, all the cops. And so, when then when he rolled up on Atticus, I thought they, you know, maybe he thought that the thing was going to get him. I think he was basically just coming up to Atticus to sort of submit to him and say, you know, I'm here, I'm yours, mm -hmm. and you know, so. I, we're not gonna. I think that's that's not the last time we're gonna see those things. I think we'll oh, see him again. No. As Atticus needs them. I think it's oh, it's yeah. interesting that Atticus has his sort of protectors in those bodyguard dog monster things, and <laughs> Letty has her protection and, and her invulnerability. So it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be interesting to see how all all this plays out. You know. Now, now let's talk about Ruby 
having sex with William, who really is Christina, and mm. then Ruby being so upset with what happened to Emmett Till, she drunk the potion to turn herself into a white woman because she didn't want to be black because she was over, she was consumed with all the emotions that black people was having to deal with during that time. Expand on mm. that whole thing. That was deep. No, I don't think that's, that's not why she did it. That's what she said. No, That's she what, said that she didn't want to be, she didn't do it because she didn't want to be uh, a black woman in that time. She didn't do it because she wanted to be with, she wanted to be with Christina in that moment or with William, but she didn't want to be, she didn't want to have a white man. She didn't want to be a black woman with a white man on that day. Right, right. That's what, say, so say she that. wanted, she, it wasn't that she wanted to be white. She just didn't, right. she wanted she what she wanted. wanted. Be- Right, but she didn't want to have. She didn't want to be a black woman with a white man on that day. So she decided right. she'd rather right. be a black, a white woman, with him on that day. So mm-hmm. it's you know I don't think she was running away from her blackness. She just didn't want to be. She didn't. She I think she in a sense she felt like if she had been with the black with a white man on that in that moment, it would have it would have stained her as a black woman. It would have stained her blackness. You know now and what what is the deal? What is the deal with her having sex with William, who is really Christina? Well, see, I brought this up when 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 this when this first came out. I brought this up, and people, uh, you know, and people looked at me like, you know, they, they, they went in the comments section and went in on me, thought I was some playing some anti-gay stuff or homophobe. Because I asked, does this mean she's gay now? And people were like, oh no, here are you talking about? Here you go again, blah blah blah. But it's a very valid question because after they came, after they, she realized what happened, they do have this question that's sort of lingering between them. And you can see when they talk that there's real affection there, that they really have some, there's an emotional connection and a bond there that is not just friends, it's definitely sexual. And you have to ask, you know, is yeah, it, I mean- does, does that mean that you're gay? Because even if, I mean, if you know that this person can transform and put on a male body, it doesn't matter if you know what's underneath. It it, it meant, it was one thing when she thought Will was a man, but she knows that Will is not a man. She knows that, that, that Christina is under there. And so you know you're having sex with a woman regardless of, of what the physical form is in that moment. And so you still have to ask. Does this make them gay now? So you know? do, and I, do, I think I think Ruby even asked that question in, in some respect. Do you do you think that Christina actually cares for her, or do you think she's using her to drive a wedge between her and Liddy to get closer to the ultimate goal, which is getting the blood from T? No, I think she's she explained it in this episode where she did say, "Yeah, I I saw there was an opportunity, and so I decided to take that opportunity." But I think she actually cares for her too. I think you can I think that people can do both. I think you can actually care for someone, potentially even be using them while you still care for them. You know, I mean it's it's unfortunate and and, and maybe and maybe we'll find out in this last episode which one is going to be which is going to be more powerful, you know, her feelings for Ruby or her desire for for immortality. I mean, I think at some point it sounds to me because I there was a scene in that in that preview where we hear Letty say, What have you done? And it sounds to me like she's probably talking to Ruby, you know, and maybe Ruby betrayed them or some of some in some way, in some fashion. And you know, because we saw at the end of this episode when when Ruby was saying, You should be getting in this car with me, and instead of staying with her sister, she hops in the car with with uh with Christina. With Christina, so, yeah. Um, and so I, I, I mean I think that Ruby genuinely cares for her. I think that Christina genuinely cares for Ruby. It's just, I mean, it's like anything. You have people that that love that love people, but they also have something else that they're that they want, something they're motivated to. We see this all the time. You see men and women in business that have families, and they're like, I love you. I want to be with my family. I love my family, but at the same time, I want to be a, 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 a you know a Fortune 500 CEO, and so. Instead of instead of staying at home and coming home at six o'clock to play with the kids and be with the wife, they're working eighteen hour days, and the kids are and the kids and the wife are at home, lonely in a big fancy house, driving fancy cars and wearing fancy clothes. But they don't have 
their husband and their wife in their life or their, their father or, or in their life or whatever. So we, it's not, it's not just that it, it's not as so simple as to say she's using her. I think it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, she loves her and cares for her, but she also has her own goals. Here's you know? the here's the problem with that and the analogy you made. It's not sustainable. <laughs> it's definitely not. It, there's going to come. There's going to be a point when the coup de grace is going to be on the line. She's either going to betray them, take Atticus's blood, or she's going to stand by and keep Ruby on her side. There's going to come to a reckoning. I agree. I agree. There a always reckoning. comes a time. There always comes a, a a breaking point in those situations where one party gets tired of it and mm -hmm. and a decision mm -hmm. has to be made either the person that that is that's out there trying to reach for something else is going to have to say that's not as important as this mm -hmm. or they're going to have to go ahead and say this is more important and they have to leave whatever else behind and do that we see it all the time we see this and i know this is going to sound jacked up but we see this all the time when it comes to soldiers soldiers sign mm -hmm. up they go to the military and they are made. They are forced to make a decision. Do I leave my family behind for six months, eighteen months, two years, nine months, whatever the time is, and go off to war, risking life and limb, and and mental stability and everything else, or do I stay behind with my family? Mm -hmm. We see it all the time, and and more often than not, they go off to war. And oftentimes, people will like they like to use the the. It is a reason or an excuse, however you want. They like to use a bit. I didn't have a choice. I had orders. Everybody has a choice. Everybody's got a choice. If you're in the military, you can refuse those orders. It may not. There may be dire consequences to it, but you can refuse those orders. It may mean that you end up spending some time in the brig. It may be that you get a dishonorable discharge. It may be that you get busted back in rank. There's could be. It could be numerous different consequences, but generally, people decide. I'm going to go ahead and leave and they leave their loved ones behind. So this is, I mean, this is a decision that people make in all aspects of their life. People do it when they decide I'm going to go back to college. You might be, you might, my mom made that decision. She would decide when we were kids that she was going to go back to law school. So you decide I'm going to leave my family behind and, and I'm going to go do my thing for a period of time. And you do your thing. And some people think of it, well, it's only temporary. I'm going to leave them behind for a couple of years so I can give them a better life overall. You have these CEOs that say, well, I'm going to leave them behind for a while so I can make millions of dollars and my kids can go to the best schools and live in the best neighborhoods and have the best of everything. And that's that's some of the justification that they have. But ultimately, people do this stuff for their own reasons. And so I don't think I don't think that Christina's in any different situation. She has a goal that she's trying to reach. She cares about Ruby, but she still wants to attain her goal. This so. is our good brother, Brandon. Just my opinion reviews. If you haven't subscribed to his channel, please do so. He has a great standalone review of episode nine. And here's a little hot take that you can expect if you go see his review. He says, Ruby is a damn traitor. He didn't say damn, I added that part. She gets <laughs> nothing more than turning into a white woman. She's willing to sacrifice teeth and for what? For them hot draws, baby. <laughs> she, she getting turned on, and Br Braith White is turning her out. It's what the sacrifice is for. And I've seen people sacrifice greater things than that for some hot draws. Believe me. Yeah, I, I, I think that Ruby probably is going to betray them. I'm not... I'm not going to say that she's not. I think she probably will betray them. And I think that as far as betraying Tick... I'm not sure she owes Tick anything to, I'm not sure, I don't know how you call, so, I mean, besides the fact that they're both black and and maybe she owes Tick some loyalty, uh, you know, to the race. Wait, she wait, 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 she, owe she, anything. she owes Tick the fact that her sister is pregnant with his child, which makes her the aunt. At the very least, she owes that. One could you can make that argument at the very but least. They're not married, the kid's not here yet. So, there people can. I mean, at, at this point, she's not she doesn't have the kid, they're not married. It'd be different if Tick and, and, and Letty were married, then you would say, Yeah, this is family, I'm not gonna betray them. 
Or if the kid was already here, you can say, okay, well, you know, this is family now, so I'm not going to betray them. But they're not married, and the kid's not here. So in all reality, she doesn't owe Tick anything. Well, the kid, if the the chick is pregnant, until the chick is not pregnant, she does owe that much. Now, if all of a sudden I, she I, lose the baby, then yeah, she don't owe she don't owe them nothing. But as of right now, as it stands, she's pregnant, and that's what they think. So she at least owes it to her family bloodline to at least help out the sister, baby daddy, at the very least. I mean, there you you can you can. You can do that. You could say that if you want, but I, I, I guess I just disagree. I think until that baby's born and people are actually family, I don't think she owes her anything. Well, that's exactly no. how she's acting. I don't take anything. That's exactly how she's acting, and I guess we'll find out in the coming episodes. What is only like what one left? The last one. Coming yeah, up. You, I'll tell you, the thing that's really interesting about this is we all live in a very racial world, a very racial country, I guess we should say. And once you are, um, and once you've experienced magic, I guess, and take some of the racial element out of it, once you realize that the world, even though for everyone else, the world is very much cut along racial lines. That they, but then you experience magic and you realize race really just isn't as as important as people think it is. Or magic is so much more important and is really the great neutralizer or the great equalizer, you know, then she, it, it takes some of that that I'm I owe this person this because of race or I owe that person that because of race. It really becomes something else. And. And it's hard. I, I think it's it's hard for a lot of people to try and understand that because most of us have never experienced magic. And so, you know, unless you do, you just don't know. I mean, I mean, we we experience something else called a higher level of thinking. <laughs> and that's supposedly the higher level of thinking is supposed to afford you certain things that can. I'm not going to say it takes the place of magic, but it grants you certain privileges certain powers in terms of you're in a position of power that maybe the magic does to some degree yeah i mean yeah i, I suppose you know i mean it's, it's like it like um like hippolyta right hippolyta is saying that she, you know she was explained she can go anywhere in any time through all these dimensions and be anybody she wants to be male female white black asian hispanic whatever she mm -hmm. could be anything and anybody in any time. And with that, you can't expect, like at that point, when you have power like that, does race matter anymore? Does nope. it matter? I mean, does it matter at all anymore? I mean, race is in some respects, it's, it is an artificial construct. And when you break down all of that, it has, it, it really, it means, it means, pro I mean, at that point, gender doesn't mean anything anymore. A lot, there's, I mean, all of these things that, that, that are used to, to categorize us and sometimes divide us really don't mean anything. And mm -hmm. but for most of us, we never get to experience anything like that. And so these small ideas of race and, and religion and, and gender and, and, you know, wealth, all, all these other little things still matter to us. Cause that's all we have to hold on to. Mm -hmm. So yeah, well, I think, we'll if, I think if we all were had, they had, be able to experience magic or or experience like Hippolyta has be able to go anywhere and experience infinite amount uh, infinite universes and dimensions and time i mean cuz i can tell you right now if i was if i was able to do that sure i would probably want to go and experience all kinds of stuff and i would probably for the first numerous i don't know how many times i'd probably be black throughout all those existences and eventually i'd probably be like why am I why am I limiting myself to just being this one thing? Why would I not say, okay, if I want to go experience, you know, earth and you know, in the uh, you know, in the middle ages or something, why would I not turn myself into a into a uh, a redheaded Scotsman or something and go back there and be Robert the Bruce or something? Or why would I not go into the future and become you know the the 82nd president? Or or why would I not go and become whatever? I mean, there's there would be no reason to limit yourself 
when once you were able to take all those constraints off, you know, man, man f all that. I'm going in outer space and I'm going to become Thanos. I'm going to go see a black hole. <laughs> I'm going to go and chill on a, on a moon called Titan. Fuck all this Earth stuff. I'm getting out of Earth. I'm so you're seeing talking about the same thing. You're talking about you're forget about you're gone even further. You're forget about well, switching races. You're talking about switching it. species. Forget you're talking it. about switching becoming a, an alien being. Well, you know, to some life form out there besides Earth, we're aliens to them. So we can mm -hmm. be, have the same genetic makeup and all that, but we're aliens to them. So I'm gonna go and chill out and see what's going on because I have things I want to know about the universe. Forget this small petty stuff. I have bigger questions and damn it, I'm going in outer space. That's what I'm gonna do. Hell, I felt like this was Marvel. Only thing they was missing was the Infinity Gauntlet. The, the Infinity Gauntlet was that book of names. That's all it was. But 